Hi guys, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. I found this image on Twitter today. It's from February 3rd of the International Space Station. It says the ISS is only designed to support a crew of seven, but on occasions it holds more. There were 11 astronauts on board during Axe 1. HAB 1 of the Axom Space Station is scheduled for launch the installation in 2025. That'll help. Um, Axon Space Station is a private space station that's currently being built by um, some group out of Texas. And it also says here um, that evidently Scott Kelly's endurance, that's when a new crew member arrived at the ISS he was sensitive to the extra CO2 buildup that the Cedra S E E D R A um had a hard time keeping up with the extra crew and he would get headaches. Um the S E E D R A must be the uh, equipment to take out the CO2. Here's another images of the Axiom Space Station uh, beginning to take steps at the uh, Thales Elenia in Italy. I'll click on that. Yeah, this is that private space station where people can pay <laughs> $55 million each uh, to go into space. I guess quite a few people have done that already to go up in the ISS. Can you imagine $55 million for um, maybe a short trip? 10 days, I think, is the maximum time they spend up there. This here was from February 13th. NASA Partners clears Axiom second private astronaut mission crew. And I believe two of them are Americans and two are from... Um, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, the UAE evidently never had a space program to train astronauts until last year. Now there is a mission that's going to launch this month on the 26th. And I don't know if it's got anything to do with this Axiom um, space station. But it says the Axe 2 crew will launch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida aboard the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. Now that's launching on the 26th. Once docked, the private astronauts plan to spend 10 days aboard the orbiting laboratory, implementing a full mission of science, outreach, and commercial activities. Um, the mission targeted for launch in spring of 2023 will be the first private space mission to include both private astronauts and astronauts representing foreign governments, as well as the first private mission command, commanded by a woman. Whitson will become the first female commander of a private space mission, adding to her prior accomplishments, including as NASA chief astronaut and the first female commander of the space station. In addition, she will add to her standing record for the longest Cumulative time in space by a NASA, NASA astronaut. Private astronaut missions to the space station are a precursor to privately funded commercial space station as part of the NASA's effort to develop a thriving low orbit uh, ecosystem and a marketplace. Yeah, it's always about money. NASA is currently reviewing proposals for the third and fourth private astronaut missions. Let me bring this over for you to the space station. So here it says the Axmon uh, Space second mission to the International Space Station officially has a crew. Four astronauts will head to the ISS during a launch planned for this spring. The only one I know of is for the 26th of this month. And the newly sanctioned crew 
will feature a woman commander and two Saudi mission specials. Uh, these people that pay to go to the ISS, they call them specialists. They go through training just like an astronaut does, but they are paying for the opportunity, $55 million, to go there. Ali Argani, or Agani, and Rana Barna, two Saudi astronauts, will serve as mission specialists and will be joining the mission Viva in arrangement between Axiom and Saudi Arabia. The team is rounded out by pilot John Schaffner, who purchased a ticket to the space through the company in 2021. This evidently will be Whitson's fourth trip to the space station. That's amazing. Argony and Bernawa secured their spots when the Saudi Space Commission and Axon Space reached a deal in September to fly the astronauts to space via the country's first astronaut program. Axiom Space previously sent an all-private crew to the ISS last spring, but complications from a jam-packed schedule and a lack of experience from the all-private crew meant that experiments on board took longer than expected. Shortly thereafter, NASA announced that it would be updating the requirements for astronauts accompanying private space missions, including a stipulation that private missions now uh, be led by former NASA astronauts. This article dated November of last year. It says it was only six weeks ago that the Saudi Arabia announced that it had started an astronaut program and planned to send two people to space. Yeah, they don't have a long <laughs> um, training program, do they? This here is supposedly the ISS fan club, and this is the current crew on board, I suppose. I don't know if this is up to date, but there's seven people currently on the ISS, and four more are going up there. So that would make 11 people. And yeah, the space station is not designed to hold that many people. Now, last year, um, Dmitry Rogozin was dismissed as the director of Roscosmos. He evidently, um, ever since the uh, Iranian war with Russia, he was just going ballistic. And some say he was becoming unstable. So he was removed from the position. And former Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov was put in charge. I think things are going better now between Russia and the United States with the uh, International Space Station. So what they're doing now is a seat swap. Here it says, following the retirement of the space shuttle in 2011, NASA had to rely on Russia for crew transportation to the space station. Although Russia eventually charged NASA about $90 million for a seat, the country held up its end of the bargain by providing reliable transportation. NASA no longer needs Russia for this, however, with the Crew Dragon coming online as an operational spacecraft. The four crew members that are supposed to go to the space station on the 26th, two are Americans, one is Russian, and the other one is from the United Arab Emirates. And he's Muslim. And we got Ramadan going on. He says he's going to try and uh, do the fasting if he can during that time. So going from left to right, we have Andre Vidayev, pilot Warren Woody Holberg, commander Stephen Bowen, and mission specialist Sultan Alyani. I thought it was interesting uh, between this picture, how serious they look, and then when they were told to smile, which was this image right here. UAE astronaut on SpaceX crew, six mission, will spend Ramadan in space. He's evidently a father of um, five children, I believe. Sultan Al-Nida said that as a traveler, 
he is allowed to keep eating normally during the first six months excursion to the International Space Station. He evidently is the first United Arab Emirate astronaut ever to fly to the United International um, Space Station. He told reporters on January 25th that he may need to keep a relatively consistent meal schedule during the mission. And is, as he is not able to do activities that can jeopardize the mission or maybe put the crew member at risk, um, they were asked if they made special foods to be sent up with him, and uh, NASA never replied to that. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, which follows the lunar calendar and changes in relation to the Gregorian calendar that most of the world uses. In 2023, Ramadan will last roughly from March 22nd to April 23rd, depending on local sightings and the crescent of the moon. Yeah, so how's that going to affect the space station um, rotating around and around? During the, during the lunar month, most adult Muslims are required to fast from dawn to sunset. Observing Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. Fasting during space station missions have happened before during Ramadan. The first ever Muslim in space, Prince Sultan bin Salman al Saud of Saudi Arabia, launched on the first day of the holy month on June 17, 1985, on a week long space mission, STS 51G. The selection process for al Saud was complicated. Back then, NASA had a shuttle position called Payload Specialist. This is what I was talking about. Um, that allowed countries or companies to fly non-career astronauts for limited duties. To supervise experiments or other tech, for example. A multinational coalition was launched. Uh, the satellite um, Arab Sat 1B aboard the shuttle mission, and Saudi Arabia was voted as the nation to launch a representative. The coalition, working with limited training time available before the launch, selected al Sadad, sorry, based on his 1,000 plus hours of pilot training time and his fluency in English, a requirement for space shuttle operations, according to Arab News. At the time of his selection, he was working as an official with the Saudi Ministry of Information. And I think this here is an image of him. Before the launch day dawned, he ate the traditional um, super, sorry for pronouncing that wrong, pre-sunrise meal. He then prayed on the launch tower just before board, boarding the space shuttle, according to the UAE newspaper. You know, it's just amazing the things that they don't make public. Once safely in space with limited spare time available, he read the Quran and fasted. Now I feel quite exhausted, possibly due to the lack of sleep, weightlessness, and loss of body fluids, he recalled in his book. One hour before he broke his fast, he added, he felt dehydrated. The rest of the crew stayed near him as supporters until he was able to eat. I mean, this is this is our space program, and I'm sorry, but it sounds like uh, they're not taking it as serious as they should. So here's the one that's going on the 26th, Al Niada. And he just had his sixth child. He's 41 years old and joked that having enough children to match the mission number is not a requirement. And I guess SpaceX had to um, remold the capsule that's going to be going up to the International Space Station to hold four seats. Stephen Bohr is going there. This will be his third flight there. He is a uh, U.S. Navy submariner. 
He was the first submarine officer selected by NASA. He was selected as an astronaut candidate in July of 2000. And he spent two years of training and um, evaluation. Yeah, compared to what they got to go through with Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I'd say he's got more training under his belt. Woody Holberg uh, was selected as an astronaut candidate in NASA's Astronaut Group 22 and began the two-year training um, in 2017. In December of 2020, he was announced as one of the 18 NASA astronauts selected as part of the Artemis program for the lunar mission in 2024. He is selected to be the pilot of SpaceX Crew-6 um, this year. Andrei Fedayev, now he's the Russian cosmonaut. Fedayev received an engineering degree in air transport and air traffic control from the Balachov Military Aviation School in 2004. Following graduation, Faldov joined the Russian Air Force in the 317th Mixed Aviation Segment. He obtained the rank of Major before his retirement in 2013. He logged over 500 hours in Russian aircraft. Faldov was selected as a cosmonaut in 2012. In July 15, 2022, he was assigned to the SpaceX Crew-6 mission. After a recent crew swap agreement between NASA and Roscosmos, he will be one of the mission specialists along with the um, Emirati astronaut. That's the one from the UAE. Now, the Russian cosmonaut, he's going to turn 42 on February 26th. And I thought they all had to know English, but evidently he was speaking through a Russian interpreter. I don't know what my family and friends are planning, but I would really want to fly on my birthday to launch on my birthday. It would be the best gift for me. Now here it says he doesn't have 500 hours as a military pilot, but 600 hours as a military pilot. He joined Roscosmos as a candidate cosmonaut in 2012 and was fully certified for flight in 2014. In 2004, he received a degree in air transport and air traffic control. And this here is the patch for the mission. Yeah, six. Yeah, it looks like a, a Viking dragon ship, don't it? Anyways, what are your thoughts? I thought that was all interesting. Yeah, um, put your thoughts down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please thumbs up my videos. Um, please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.